Well, I just finished watching the Apple event and the iPhone 13 Pro rumors were right. Hey guys, Blake Calhoun and another episode of Almost Professional, the podcast about indie filmmaking, mobile filmmaking, DIY filmmaking, really all things filmmaking. And today, iPhone filmmaking. I wanted to just briefly analyze the iPhone 13 Pro announcement today because it's a big deal if you're a video creator in particular. The camera system has been completely redone. It looks to be really good. And I want to talk about the top three things as a filmmaker that I think are the most important. Now, there are a lot of these, but a few of them really stood out. And this will be in reverse order. And so I'm not going to go over everything in detail today because the announcement was just today. And the phones are actually going to ship at the end of next week. That'd be September 24th, 2021, depending on when you're listening or watching this. But this is some cool news. I mean, I'm really excited. I feel a little bit like a kid on Christmas morning. And if you're a video creator, mobile video creator, but really just a filmmaker in general, doesn't matter if you use your phone to shoot family videos or to shoot feature films. This is some big news today, and it's really only the beginning. So the number three thing for me is this new feature called cinematic mode. And I've been talking about this for a while. If you listen to this podcast, you'll know, or if you follow me on Twitter, and that is the portrait mode video, more or less. So you're getting shallow depth of field now with your iPhone. And that's pretty big. It's actually really big. There's going to be some caveats because the video they shot looked really amazing, but Apple always does that and stuff always looks amazing. And in real world use, it doesn't always look the same, but this is super promising. I mean, there's already apps that do this right now, like Focus Live or ProTake, and there's a few others, I think. But Apple now, obviously, when they take it on, they take it to the next level and you can change the focus in post-production, which is huge. You can do that with Focus Live. And so I'll have to do some tests once it's released to figure out what is better, so to speak. But the ease of use doing it in the native camera app will probably be the winner. And you can do rack focus, which I'm not sure you can do that in the third-party apps right now. And I was really surprised that they announced the ability to do rack focus right off the bat in a first generation version. That's pretty cool. Now, again, just like with portrait photos, the edges will probably not be perfect. A lot of the people in the sample videos, as I recall, I watched it just a little while ago. I think there was some bald guys or maybe guys wearing some hats or helmet. I can't remember. But usually you have trouble when you have big hair or curly hair or fine detail, you'll have trouble with a simulated blurry background. But nonetheless, it looks really cool. And one little caveat too, though, I noticed that it is HD only. It won't do it in 4K currently. But the ability to be able to do that is huge. And again, this is a first gen product. And so we'll see how it works. Again, I think there'll be some issues with fine detail and probably motion. Although the samples they showed, the characters were moving the actors were moving and that was something i was really curious how the depth maps were going to work so stay tuned on that but that is a really cool feature my number two feature that they announced that i am excited about is the three times telephoto it's a 77 millimeter telephoto one of the bigger things from coming from a traditional camera to an iphone especially for mobile journalists i find is you don't have a long telephoto range so having a three times tele built in is great. And then on top of that, you'll be able to connect an external lens, like a two or three times tele to that. Assumingly, we'll have to wait and see how they work. They'll probably have to reconfigure them to make sure that they focus properly. But then you'll have like a six times or a five, five or six times tele in your phone, which is going to be great. But having it built in three times is huge. And so that will give you the ability to get natural shallow depth of field easier, especially when things are close to your, uh, your phone, close to the camera, but even in the distance, because the camera sensors are larger too. I don't know the exact specs right now because I just watched the event, 
So I know on the 12 Pro Max, the wider large sensor made a big difference in the depth of field. And of course, with low light as well. And that'll be the case with the 13 Pro. And again, by the way, this is only on the 13 Pro. The cinematic mode does work on the regular iPhone 13. So that is cool. But back to the Pro, the longer lens is a great feature for video and for photos. And the only negative to it is it's now an F2.8. So I believe the previous one was an F2.2. I could be wrong about that. But the longer lens is dictating a slower aperture, but it's not super slow. I bet it will suffer though in low light. And that is something we'll have to, you know, weigh advantages and disadvantages. In low light, it might make sense to put a telephoto lens, a two times or even a three times like the B script on the iPhone wide lens. And then you have an F1.5 there. And that is a new feature there. It's an F.15 aperture. So it's a really wide aperture. So that's my number two. My number one is something I've been talking about for a while. Well, I say a while, at least for a month since I heard the rumor. And you know, iPhone rumors, lots of times they don't come true. This one did, and that is ProRes video now in the palm of your hand. This is huge. Now, if you're not a filmmaker, you may not understand the significance of this. But as a filmmaker, this is huge news. Not only will you be able to shoot ProRes, you'll also be able to edit in ProRes. Now, again, it's so new, I have no idea whether this will work in LumaFusion for editing, but the capture side within the iPhone, I mean, I can't overstate how cool this is. It will open the phone up to being used on much more large scale productions than it is now. I mean, it is now some already, of course, and H.264, H.265 can give you great results, don't get me wrong. But ProRes encoding, it's just a professional codec. You'll almost always have much better color, less video noise. I'm assuming it's 10-bit 422. They didn't talk about that. It might be 420, I'm not sure. And it could be a new flavor of ProRes. They didn't mention, there's a lot of different kinds of ProRes. ProRes HQ, ProRes 444, ProRes LT, ProRes Proxy regular ProRes. My guess is this will be some form of ProRes LT because of storage limitations. And you can record ProRes in 4K, by the way, up to 4K 30. Can't do the higher frame rates. But ProRes is huge. I just, I can't get over it. And I'm really excited about that. I really think that we're getting closer and closer to where for some stuff, you don't need another camera. This is that next step. You'll always hear the argument why not just use a DSLR or a mirrorless camera instead of your phone? And those are legit. And I've never been one to say only use your phone. I know some people out there are that. I use all kinds of cameras. I use my Sony primarily on YouTube. Uh, right now I'm shooting on a GoPro. Uh, for my corporate work or my film work, I have a Blackmagic camera, use a RED camera. I have a lot of different cameras and I use my iPhone a lot. Right now I'm using it to record this podcast. So I'd use it for audio and video. It's kind of a jack of all trades. But I also shoot tons of B-roll for my YouTube channel on my iPhone, and I do that for corporate jobs as well. But by adding ProRes, now you're talking. So imagine using ProRes with that cinematic mode, Now I don't know if that will work, and doing interviews. All you gotta do is take your phone in your pocket, you're traveling, you go to a hotel room, you set your phone up with a tripod, and you've got an image quality that rivals, I mean, pretty much any camera especially on the prosumer, you know, mirrorless type camera range. Again, because you're simulating the depth of field, the bokeh, but who cares if it looks good? And especially, I gotta believe it's gonna look really good on a static interview. Imagine shooting interviews for a documentary or for a corporate video or even for YouTube. YouTube video uh, stand-ups or studio shots, etc. And then you can quickly take that file, pop it in Final Cut Pro, or Premiere Pro, whatever you use, and edit it very easily. It doesn't tax your computer. ProRes is a very simple codec to edit. And again, for encoding and re-encoding, it's an excellent codec that doesn't lose quality when you export it or when you import it and then re-export it. I mean, it loses some quality, but very minute. I mean, just as an example, on the feature films I do, on the TV commercials I do, Everyone requires ProRes. It's usually ProRes HQ for delivery. So it's a professional codec. And the great thing is, since Apple owns ProRes, it's one of the 
main things they've done in the video industry that is ubiquitous. You don't have to use Apple products to use ProRes. It's just a really great deal. As you can tell, very excited to have this new feature. Well, you can pre-order the phone this Friday, which I believe is the 17th, and then they'll ship on the 24th of September, which is great. That's a quick turnaround. Last year with the pandemic, things were slowed down. I guess the supply chains, et cetera. This year, that doesn't appear to be a problem. We'll see how it goes, but I'm definitely ordering one. I am debating, though, between the iPhone Pro and the Pro Max because this year, unlike last year, the Pro and the Pro Max are identical. Same features, same lens, same size camera sensors, et cetera. Just the body is smaller. The Pro is smaller. It's a 6.1 inch versus a 6.7 inch. I've been a large iPhone carrier since the iPhone 8 Plus, and so I'm used to it. Although the 12 Pro Max, I gotta admit, that is a beast of a phone. I actually carry my 11 Pro Max as my daily driver, and then I use my 12 Pro Max on YouTube and for various video shoots, etc. So we'll see what I decide to do, but it's a good problem to have. And I know a lot of you guys don't upgrade your phones every year. I wouldn't either, except that I run a YouTube channel about iPhone filmmaking. However, I really think if you are a video creator, this is a good upgrade, even if you have the 12 Pro, the 12 Pro Max. Not 100% necessary. If you're not a video creator or a filmmaker, then no, you wouldn't need to upgrade. But if you are, these are big deals, and I would personally say go ahead and take the plunge. Maybe sell or trade in your old one, get the new one. It's that big of a deal. The one thing I don't know, and the last thing I'll say here, is that I don't know if cinematic mode or ProRes will be available on the 12 Pro Max or the 12 Pro. They didn't say. I guess it's possible because those are very fast phones. I doubt it would be available before that but it may only be on the new phone because of the A15 chip. I can't answer those questions yet, but I will be able to very soon. And if you follow my YouTube channel for very long, you know that the last couple years, I've done extensive coverage when the new iPhones come out, meaning testing the iPhone, the current iPhone versus the prior iPhone, trying to help you guys make a buying decision, whether it's worth it for you to upgrade. Well, anyway, those are my top three features that were announced. And again, it's the cinematic mode, which is really cool. Shallow depth of field. It's the 77 millimeter telephoto, a three times telephoto. And then ProRes video. How about you? What do you think? Let me know in the comments if you're watching this on YouTube or hit me up on Twitter if you're listening to this on Apple or Spotify or wherever. Well, this isn't my normal way to release a podcast, but I did just want to quickly get this out because it is breaking news, so to speak. And I really think this is big news, especially if you're a filmmaker. Well, this has been another episode of Almost Professional. I'm your host, Blake Calhoun. Thanks for listening, and I look forward to talking to you in the next episode.